Hi, I'm Dr. Paul. Welcome to another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. I have a treat for you today. We're going to see some live footage of three different children in a row, three different families, diagnosed with strep throat. You get to see me in action and how we go about diagnosing and treating strep throat. Okay, cool. So anyway, I hear you have a sore throat. Hi, how's it going? Good. All right. Hello, thanks hey. for waiting. Hey, Hello. how's it going? Good. All right, it's good to see you guys. How long have you had a sore throat? One day. One day, you think? Does that sound about right? It does sound right. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Well, we're going to take a good look at that and see if we can figure out what's going on with your throat, okay? And one of you's got more of a sore throat than the other. Who's got the sore throat? You've got the sore throat. Since here, you've got a sore throat. It's been going on for a couple days. It was worse at night. It hurts to swallow. Does that sound about right? You're wide. Say, ah. Uh, uh, good job. you got the best ah. Uh, I think you might be a singer when you grow up. Okay. Yeah, because you hold that note really long. <laughs> so I think you could be in musicals. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, this is my little light. We're going to take a quick look in your throat. In there. What we see is it's really red back there on the tonsils. The tonsils are on the sides, and the uvula is what hangs down. And it's quite red back there. All right, let's take a look at your throat. Big, long, ah. Ah. Uh. Again, ah. Uh, uh, your throat actually looks quite normal. You're doing a great job. What I'm seeing there is very red on the back of your throat and kind of a bumpy appearance and quite red. So you're doing great. Well, what we're going to do, we have to take a swab. Here. This is just like a little tickle. It doesn't hurt. So you see those little swabs there? I'm going to have you do ah uh, one more time. Say ah. Uh, oh, say the ah. Uh. Good job. You did so yeah. good. Good job. We're just going to real quick do that. You did it. Ah. Good job. You did great. You guys are. Say a big ah. Uh. Say ah. Uh. Say it. Is there um. Good a... job. Yep. Yeah, we got some juckies okay. on there. So that will. What we do is this this other little tube here. If if this one doesn't give us the information we need, we'll have this one goes to the hospital. It's for a backup culture. I'm so happy that you were excellent patients, and we'll have an answer here in about five, ten minutes, okay? You don't have a rash, I don't think. You haven't noticed any rash. No, I haven't. Sometimes with strep, you'll get a fine, bumpy okay. rash. It's called scarlatina, but okay. I've looked her over pretty carefully already, so I know she does. We'll get yours going. We're going to have your very own rapid strep test kit. This is the little swab, and it was on a timer, and what, if we have two lines that are red, then we'll know it's positive. Okay. Super. Okay. okay. So it's okay. positive. Okay. Yeah. You we thought it might be. <laughs> oh, J. That's how you write a backwards J. That's great. Okay. Thank you guys you. were right. <laughs> so we do have a positive. Okay. Watch this. All right. Watch this. What happens is the strep actually reacts with the fluid there and creates that line. So that's how we know it's positive. So you are the winner the of boy another strep throat. You can how soon uh, will he start to feel better once he starts taking the antibiotics? Uh, 18 to 24 hours. It's like oh, magic. Okay, okay. Yeah, because we're about to go on vacation. Yeah. So it would be nice if he was feeling better. Absolutely. So there you have it. You've seen three different families. They actually came in in a row at my urgent care today. And it was like unbelievable to have three positive streps in a row. That's the kind of positives I'm going to get in a week in a clinic. But highlighted were a few points. We've got one family that has recurrent strep all the time. They're worried. Should we keep using all these antibiotics? What if we didn't use antibiotics? Excellent question. Excellent point. You know, the current thinking is it's still worth treating strep throat, as I mentioned earlier in this video, because of glomerulonephritis and acute rheumatic heart disease. While extremely rare, they still happen. So I lean towards, yes, treat it. But honestly, if you didn't, 99 times out of 100, perhaps 999 times out of 1,000, you're going to be OK. Your child's just going to be sicker longer. They're going to feel horrible. If you've ever had a strep throat, you know that. You can have 104 fevers, very painful, 
shaking chills. It's no fun. So antibiotics will help you get better quicker and avoid those complications. The issue of what do we do with this family that keeps getting all these strep throats? Should you try to eradicate strep from the entire family? You can try. It's not easy, but every family member can be cultured, and sometimes you figure out, ah, okay, maybe mom or dad or a sibling is the carrier for this strep, and they just keep reinfecting themselves. So there are other antibiotics that can be used that are a little better at eradicating strep. It's not an easy task. Sometimes might be worth doing. So you saw in this video we were doing a rapid strep. <clears throat> you take a swab of the throat. We do a backup culture. The rapid strep technology is so good that if it's positive, you can rest assured 99% chance your child has strep. If it's negative, there's a 10 to 20% chance they may not, which is why we send that backup culture. We don't want to treat strep unless it's really there. We want to try to avoid overuse of antibiotics. In a typical busy day, I might send five or 10 strep throat cultures and only one or two be positive. This was a rare day. The other thing I would point out is the age of strep. You might think, wow, all these kids looked about the same age, three, four, five, six, somewhere in there. It is very rare to have strep under the age of one or two, and we don't see it as often in older kids, but it, you can. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Paul. Look forward to seeing you on another video. Thank you.